So just a quick question. How many of you knew bash gaming before the conference? <laughs> yeah, we have we suck at marketing. So yeah. So uh, this is a startup, but I'm not talking, going to talk today about my startup. I'm going to talk about a million dollar idea which can earn you money in one day. Just kidding. I'm going to do some shameless self-promotion here so that more of you know about Bash Gaming. Uh, we are a gaming company. We make apps on uh, mobile devices, tablets, Facebook. And uh, uh, I'm going to share a journey of my own entrepreneurial career and our company and uh, how we reached from zero to the revenue that we had last year and what were the experiments that we did, some were successful, some were not successful, and what we learned from them. Uh, to give you a brief out what the company position is currently, we are a leader in social casino gaming in the world. Uh, our app runs across iPads, Kindles, Android tablets, Android phones, iPhones, and people can play seamlessly. Our flagship app, Bingo Bash, is a top grossing app across devices. It's top grossing on iPad, iPhone, on iOS app stores and on Google Play app store. And uh, technology wise, we have this in-house technology where we can support up to 40,000 concurrent users playing simultaneously across devices which is the other. Uh, this is a game. Uh, in India or Commonwealth countries, we call it Housey. And in the US or uh, in the West, they call it Bingo. It's a traditional game of Bingo where numbers are called, you drop on the ticket, and then if you have this pattern, then you win. So we did an interesting twist with this game. We added a concept of power plays, which can enhance your chance of winning, and added other cool features where you can play with real players in the same room. Uh, so these are variations of a bingo game. You can see. This is a room we launched for Christmas, for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so back to the company. Uh, we are three founders. Uh, we started in 2007, uh, incorporated in 2008, Moved to Bangalore in 2009. We are a 90 people team in India now, still growing, we are still hiring. 20 people team in the valley, which takes care of marketing product. We have 30 million installed players just for Bingo Bash, our flagship product. Total player base is much more. Uh, out of that 30 million players, 1.5 million play every day across devices. 40k people are playing right now. At any given point of time, 40k people are live. And uh, it's ranked number one on iPad on the top-crossing charts in the US worldwide. The top rank it achieved on iPhone was five worldwide, and number eight on Android, Google Play. The last year revenue was $1.55 million just from one Bingo Bash game. So uh, I'll talk about how we went from 2007 to current 2013, and from the revenue from zero to $1.55. First, I'll start with the founders. So we are, we are three guys, uh, Sumit, Vikas, and me. They're not brothers. <laughs> and uh, Sumit and Vikas are not here, so I'll just hog the limelight. Uh, I was, uh, I started my startup learnings from SlideShare. I had a tremendous amount of learning there. Uh, how it felt first hand working in a global startup, which had so much reach. Uh, I joined the initial technical team, uh, like after the startup was around four, year, four months old. And then when I started working on my own startup, I quit the company. Uh, I am a programmer by trade. I'm a geek. I don't like business that much, but uh, I like startups. I like working in startups. I like working for startups. Uh, I love to code. I live to code. I still code. I still work on the projects whenever I get time. Uh, I got introduced to computers and the internet in the dot-com era, and that's when I started my first startup when I was 17. Made some money, lasted about a year or so. But I got so excited that I dropped one year, didn't go into college. I was mad, so, uh, but eventually I got census back, joined college, and then again started up my second startup, made some money, didn't take pocket money for four years from home. So it was pretty good. Uh, during the college, uh, I drew a lot of inspiration from various peoples, and uh, this inspiration went ahead a long way in shaping my thought process, in uh, helping me day to day make decisions. Like the, the number one which I can state is Peter Norwick. Uh, for those of you who don't know him, he is director of technology at Google. So he wrote a series of essays, and uh, sorry, he's director of search. So he, he basically takes up Google search. So he wrote an essay uh, saying, learn programming in 10 years. 
what basically he wanted to convey that was in today's world people are in a hurry to learn everything if you go to a bookstore you'll find learn programming in 21 days learn bengali in 21 days so he was like if you want to master a trade and if you want to reach a position where people will respect you for a trade you have to invest years in it and he said according to his calculation it was 10 years so that, that this article gave me an insight that okay if i want to be a name in indian startups if i want to, want to make my name in technology i have to perceive i have to wait i have to work hard for years second was linus torvalds i read about him a lot and i learned one thing that talk is cheap show me the code you can talk whatever you want in conferences on press anywhere but eventually what will give you satisfaction is your own code is your own technology if you don't have a good product you can talk all day long but it will not do any good for you another one was kelvin and hobbs i read about it when i was a kid when i grew up and uh, if you read kelvin and hobbs it has a lot of small small messages in cartoon strips the best one i li liked was it's only work if somebody makes you do it if you love your job you'll never feel tired you can work day in day out months years you'll never feel tired or bored about the job you love and one event that changed my life was linux bangalore this was the first time i came to bangalore and i met real geeks the creator of genome creator of php i met them it was really inspiring it motivated me to go into open source i released a couple of open source products after that so all these inspirations are still with me and guide me today and uh, finally uh, this is the most exciting piece of document i read i'm not sure how many of you read it has anybody read the tao of programming you guys should read it if you are in programming and uh, for programmers it's it's really the tao so yeah back to reality i joined cognizant after college uh, family asked me to like go for campus placement join quit after 7 months didn't like the culture there revived my startup that i started in college but it failed i was the only co-founder only employee so big mistake then i joined slideshare dot dead thank sorry i failed interview at google the seventh interview at google and then i joined slideshare dot dead thank google uh, thank god that i didn't get into google because they were interviewing me for a adwords operations so anyway but while at slideshare i started bit rhymes that was like after a year or so and uh, during the last months uh, me and my co-founders worked nights to just bootstrap the company so uh, where did we meet the co-founders any can you guess the logo yeah so so we met online on orkut and uh, sumit and vikas were in the us they are still in the us i handle the india operations now but we started working on the idea even before we met physically so we only met after 3 4 months when they were in india we met for a day or so and then again went back to working from our own sumit was in la uh, sorry sumit was in sf vikas was in la and i was in delhi so we were three people working on the idea and there was no idea we just sat together said we want to do something we don't know the idea we'll try out 5 6 10 ideas which have works so ours was a very unconventional story like we didn't have a business plan before we started we just want to do something and we were ready to try anything and anything else one so where did we start at that time during 2007 facebook released its platform to developers it was hot people were gaining large number of users due to virality uh, slide.com rocky.com were heroes then but nobody was making money so what did we do say okay let's try it out let's make our app on on facebook so what we did was we created a pumpkin app you can send a pumpkin to your friend on Halloween. So that was a silly app, but that gave us some insight on how difficult it is to develop on the game or not. The reason we chose Facebook was micro payments and virtual currency was a big hit in, in Japan. It was a big hit in China. And in China, it became so hit that government has to, had to intervene and stop virtual currency, people spending money on buying virtual goods. So we knew that someday it has to come to the US as well. And why we chose US? Because we thought that the paying customers are there in the US or West or the English speaking countries. So we wanted to focus there and the advantage we had was two of my partners were in the US so we can get the cultural or the pulse of the area better than we are in India. So that's what we did. We created Halloween Penguins, but we didn't make any money. Nobody was making money on Facebook. We thought, why not I'll make something that will help people make money on Facebook? So we started this micropayments idea. We tied up with PayPal. PayPal allowed us to charge credit cards as low as $1. Because the policy of PayPal is to charge minimum of $5 per transaction. So we struck a deal. We make a micro payment solutions. We went to developers. And then one day, 
Facebook comes and said they are rolling out their own microbiome solution. So yeah, a dream got killed before it could fly. We said, okay, we missed the Facebook bug bus. But what was the challenge during that time? The biggest challenge was geeks were making pumpkin apps. Me and Vikas were hardcore programmers. And we didn't like the idea of making cheap apps, sending pumpkins, or throwing pillows at friends. So it was like, it took us a lot of convincing from Sumit to tell us that, okay, guys, you have to try this. It's not that you are geeks, so you'll only make enterprise apps that will have billions of transfer of money happening and stuff like that. You have to do this. And if you're not doing this, I'm doing this alone. So you, want, you are in or not. So we were like, okay, grumpy, okay, we'll do it. So we started making silly apps on Facebook. But the thing we realized with Facebook was there was no alternative first move advantage. When you are a startup, you have less money, the first move advantage will compensate for that. So we always wanted to try a new technology that would give us the first move advantage. And luckily during that time, open social came up. Right? So uh, during open social, we wanted to launch on first day. So we tied up with MySpace and told them that we are willing to make open social app. And they said, okay, if you launch your app before this date, we'll uh, launch you, we'll promote your app on day one with our users. We said, okay, fine. So what we did was launch on day zero on MySpace. And uh, we were late. And so we hacked the first app in 14 hours and submitted it to MySpace and it went live next day. And uh, starting from there, we amassed 33 million users on MySpace across a lot of apps. And eventually we were like, we had two top apps uh, in the top five on MySpace. Uh, but what it gave us was a, a, a small revenue stream. So from second month onwards, we were profitable. And why we were profitable? Because during that time, Facebook had less US users and MySpace had more US users. So the paying users were in, were in MySpace. The college students were in Facebook at that time. So we got revenue coming in and uh, we wanted to scale. We made new and new apps, but it was very difficult hiring. During that time, when the startup culture was not too high, it was difficult to hire people. So we were like, we grew up to maximum six people till December. Yeah. And uh, the, the challenge, like I told, was you had to wear multiple hats. I was the programmer, I was the UI designer, I was the Photoshop artist, I was a sysadmin, I was a customer support, and I was the accountant. So you have to do everything when you are a startup. You cannot rely on having a separate account team or a separate Photoshop guy who can do some Photoshop for you. So you have to learn everything and just get the things out. Yeah. Uh, so the experiment, a failed experiment that we did early was, because I am from Bhubaneswar, I thought, why not start in my hometown? I have a support system there. It will be easy for me to start. So we decided to open up our office in Bhubaneswar rather than Bangalore. I waited for six, seven, six months, seven months. We could not hire people. So then I came back to Bangalore in 2009 shared office with another startup in HSR layout. And then eventually when we were able to attract some talent, we moved to a, and thankfully that was a time of slowdown. So we got like people easily in Bangalore. And uh, a good, good people in Bangalore because seven out of six people, six out of seven people are still here with us after five years. So uh, during MySpace, we made all these apps, which amassed about 33 million users, like around, I guess, 10 to 12 apps we made on MySpace. But what happened? Like, there was an opportunity cost we paid when we, by focusing on MySpace. And the cost was not working on Facebook. Because by the time we were working on MySpace, uh, Mafia Wars, Mobster, all were doing good on Facebook. So we had again missed the bus. Because when this, they started monetizing on Facebook, we were not there. So that was again a mistake. US, US users were moving to my, my uh, Facebook, MySpace was dying, there was revenue stream were going down, and it was getting difficult to come on Facebook. But we didn't give up, we said, okay, let's start with porting existing apps to Facebook, let's see what happens. During that time, iPhone launched, we said, okay, let's try iPhone 2. We started making two apps, we made two apps on iPhone, didn't go well. Uh, but eventually, we knew the pulse of the audience, uh, we honed our game design skills, we learned how the industry people are working in the game. So we started making apps on Facebook and uh, we got moderate success. Best app got like 10 million installs, a million users playing every day, uh, every month. But we, the, still that elusive app was missing. The app that will make a million users per day. So the thing that helped us was we were profitable from the start. Even on Facebook, we were making money so we could sustain our office, some few employees. And, but we used that money in the game. Uh, in the company, made games, learned, 
by experimenting on games and stuff. Then again, we took an experiment saying, okay, from all our games, we see that the games that are women centric are doing well. So let's try to focus on women centric games. Let's not make hardcore games. We had another hardcore game like War and stuff, which were more male centric. But because the apps which were female centric were doing well, we said, okay, let's focus on that. And that paid up. Uh, the games that we made in Facebook, notable ones were Warlords, which was a male centric game. Wild Paradise was again female centric. Age of Heroes, male centric. Penguin World, Saloon Street, Pet Spa, all female centric. And then we, uh, because Facebook was tightening its virality, it was getting difficult to acquire users. And more and more app developers were joining the game. So what we did was we created lots of, uh, you can say, sharing apps, buddy calendar, pick share, just to get free traffic, viral traffic, and then cross promote an app to that. So that was again an experiment. And uh, trying these uh, cheap apps, what we gained was we got a lot of Indian users as well. But again, we lost something. We missed the iOS bus. We gave iOS for Facebook. That I count as my biggest mistake here because iOS became a massive market. People are making shitloads of money on iOS. Small developers, shitty apps, but shitloads of money. And then came 2011. Quality of apps was going down, improving. The cost of acquisition was increasing. We were paying $2 to a user just to come and try the game on Facebook. We are not even sure if we'll pay, pay up or buy anything in the game. We started make, that was the first year we started losing money in the business. Uh, we almost gave up on Facebook. We said, okay, let's try two, three more games. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. Uh, and it, during that time also, there was a lot of consolidation. Zynga was like going crazy. EA came up, acquired Playdom. Disney came up, acquired Playfish. So big guys were coming, deep pockets. They didn't worry about user acquisition costs. They wanted the users. So they were bidding like as high as $3, $4 per user. So it was getting difficult for us to sustain. So we said, okay, let's try something in the sideline. We have a lot of Indian users. Why not try some Indian apps? Uh, Android was getting hit uh, in India. A lot of Android phones were coming up, cheap Android phones. So what we did was we made an application called Pixar, where you can send a photo to a person by SMS. You don't need GPS to send him a photo. But you don't need GPS to upload it. So we sensed that opportunity. We thought, okay, let's try this out. Didn't work. But by that time, what happened was one of our game started getting traction. And uh, that we thought that, okay, this is the game which will give us the elusive hockey stick curve. So it, during late 2011, we launched Bingo. We noticed that game has gained traction. But just to tell you, we launched the same Bingo game way back in 2009. It didn't pick up. So it, it's mostly a hit-driven trends business. When people are playing farm games, they want farm games. When they're playing mafia games, they want mafia games. When they're playing city building games, they want resource management games. Now that they're playing bingo, they want bingo or casual casino games. So it's a, it's a trend between business. When we launched in 2008, there were no takers. But now, we got a lot of traction. So we noticed a game which is doing well. We said, OK, let's, let's launch our own game. We have it ready. Let's work on it for a couple of weeks. Let's launch it. We did it. And guess what? We, the decision to focus on women-centric game paid off, because bingo is mostly paid by women. So we had a lot of good audience. We know which audience was paying. And we had the game perfectly suited for them. So what we did was we quickly reskinned the game, launched on Facebook, and cross-promoted to, the, to these users. Became an instant hit. Now there was competition on Facebook with we and another developer. But what we did was we moved first on iOS around like four months or five months earlier than them. And that gave us a lot of first move advantage. Because our focus was always on technology and analytics, we were able to iterate fast, and we got 100% growth per quarter on Bingo game. That, that has been the fastest growing game ever that we have produced. Yeah, and the growth of Bingo Bash again prompted us to change our company name from Bitrhymes to Bash Gaming. So on paper, it is still Bitrhymes, but we do business as Bash Gaming now. Uh, we quickly scaled up. We got advisors on board, raised range on, from advisors. We got a good set of advisors on board. Launched on multiple platforms, iPhone, Kindle, Android and quickly grow the development team. And uh, what we are today now is the bingo game is world's number one social bingo game. It's top browsing app across platform. And our focus now is on casual casino games. And the, the team that we have built up is an team, and we are still counting. Yeah, stop all charts. So uh, on a personal front, 
this moment gave me more satisfaction than anything else. Seeing the revenue charts didn't give me that much adrenaline rush, but seeing this, a game that you developed, is on top of the world, is more satisfying than anything else. So, the learning from from what I had was like, if you love what you're doing, then you will not care about revenues. Even on bad times, you will not feel that it is a bad time because revenue was never important to us. What was important was to make one game top of the charts, and that we did it with Bingo Bash. Yeah. So uh, uh, these are the few learnings that I have, a few takeaways for uh, uh, you guys. Like, find co-founders who complement each other. Uh, from what I believe, like we had a perfect mix of, of co-founders. Uh, me and Vikas were good in technology. Uh, Sumit was good in managing, so he's the CEO. Vikas is the CTO. I handle the India operations. They always wanted to be in the US. I always wanted to be in, the, be in India. And uh, that gave us a competitive advantage that we can set up a team in India and lower our costs. Uh, love what you do. If you don't love it, you will give up at the first opportunity. And if you're loving what you do, then you'll think that, okay, this will also pass. Bad times will come, good times will come, it will pass. And one more thing is, if it fails, you can console yourself saying that, okay, I did what I loved, so no harm. I just lost a few years, I can do it again. But if you are not doing it, if you're doing it just for the money, you will kick yourself saying, why did I try this? Why didn't I do that? So loving what you're doing is the most important thing in a startup. Uh, next thing is build on your experiments. In a startup, your initial business plan will never work. You have to experiment again and again and again. Something will not work. Some competitor will screw up the market. You have to try something else. User pattern will change. Trend will change. Laws will change. There can n number of things that can go wrong. So you have to continuously experiment, evolve. And the important thing is measure your experiments. See what happened. Like Sachin was saying, they measured how many people are actually converting from free to paid. So if you don't measure, you can never know what is happening. So measurement of our experiments is very key. And that's why we place a lot of importance on analytics in our game design. And uh, in our company, whenever we make a product, from day zero, we know that, OK, this is the idea somebody is proposing. How will you validate whether this is working or not? We have to have a metric associated with the idea to know whether it is going to be a hit or flop. Another thing is talk to people in the industry. You have to talk to people, meet people, share notes, see what is working for them, see what is what not working for them. If you want to, if you go in a cave and work alone, it will not work for you. Because you cannot experience everything. If you talk to people who are not competing with you, say a, a game who is male-centric, we are female-centric, he is making a resource management game, I am making a casino game. Talk to them, share notes, what is working with them, see my numbers, you show me your numbers. That's the way you both can grow. Otherwise, you have to experiment more to get those numbers yourself. So this last part is very important, to talk to people in the industry. Get, get advisors on board. They have treasure trove experience. They have these hunches that what will work, what is not work. So what I feel that in Indian startup, we have this advisors part missing. People generally go for advisors because they think they'll have to give some equity or for whatever reason, I don't know. But getting advisors on board and advisors who are experts in the field of your business is very important. Uh, another thing was knowing when to give up on the experiment. Uh, it's tough. You have to back your gut. I mean, you have to take a decision and stick by it. Like Vishal also said that it can work out and you can become a visionary and it can, cannot work and you can become an idiot. So there is no easy way for that, but you have to back your gut and just, as Steve Jobs said, that you have to hope that in the future the dots will connect. Like we, we focused on India for, uh, for uh, women for, the, for our audience and it paid up with Bingo Bash. So you have to just back your gut and see, okay, this is not working, I'll try this. And then just say, okay, I'll not feel sorry because I took a wrong decision. I took a decision from whatever information was available to me at that time, and take the decision. Just back your gut and go ahead. If you are lean, then it's, it'll work best for you. You can take detours, you can switch the course, you can take U-turn. So that helped us a lot because we were like around 10 to 15 people company always for three years. We had always had a revenue stream coming, so that was a plus. We didn't have to worry about revenues. And yeah, like if you see that w the way we evolved was by experimenting. We started with payment gateway, didn't work. Social apps, okay. We go to social games then. Then women's focused games, and now we are casual pink casino games. Means casual games, casual casino games which are focused towards women. So this is how we have narrowed down our area of focus. 
when we started we didn't know what we are going to do but now we know that we are going to focus on this so only by experimenting you can know whether what is working for you are you good in this domain do you know what do you have what it takes in this domain where you are working so experiments will tell you that another thing was talk is cheap show me the code uh, lot of co-founders initially try to get a lot of traction and saying okay i'm going to do this cool thing look at me no invest that time in your company build the technology build the team build the startup press will not break or make a startup people try to you know publish articles on newspapers saying okay i'm i'm doing this cool startup look at me i am going to do this invest that time in startup don't don't talk talk much and it will take time uh, you have to keep patience especially if you're trying something new we were like hardcore technologist we liked games but we never made games before so it was a new domain for us it took time it took all the learnings that we could gather in 5 years making something breaking something and we put it in one game and everything worked so it will take time and your efforts will never ever go waste whatever you do if you work for say a few months on some game you'll have some learnings from that so don't get disappointed that okay my time was wasted your effort will never go waste keep failing keep doing keep doing keep failing that's the only mantra and i want to end up with this quote from bhagavad gita saying karm karo phal ki chinta mat karo so if you are in a startup industry keep doing keep doing don't expect returns it will come